Welcome to episode number 33 of Life Without Cravings. Let's talk about something important, at least I think it's important. And it's something that I see again and again, both with my clients and with my followers. And it's this belief that they need more knowledge to figure out how to quit the carbs. Or sometimes it's that there is something wrong with them. I see this more in my clients and it's probably because they're opening up to me and they're telling me and they're asking what what is actually wrong with me? Why is it that I can't do this? And they think that because they can't do it right now, it means that something's wrong with them. And I don't think that either of these are true. Let's just make that very clear. So whatever is going on here, there's never ever anything wrong with you. And I'm not saying this just to be positive, Polly. <laughs> I'm saying it because I know that it's true. And I want you to believe me when I say that. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm not just making stuff up here. Your brain has been trained to respond in a certain way. And it's not your fault, but it is your problem to deal with. And it's also your responsibility towards yourself to do something about it. If you want to be living a life free of urges, free of compulsions to eat, free of just feeling like you're not in control when you're around food. If that's where you want to be, then it's your responsibility to do something about it. Whether it's your fault or not, and it's not your fault. So when it comes to needing more knowledge in some cases it might be sort of true a little bit but more than knowledge i think people need a certain skill they need to learn a skill but it's not a skill in the sense that most people think that it is because when we associate skills with something we usually think about a skill that we need to do something with our physical body but most of what you actually need to do when you are addicted to food and when you want to rid yourself of that addiction specifically is to not do, to do less. Because if you don't put any food in here, you're not going to be eating it. So that's a completely different skill. And I'll talk more about that in a second. So I mentioned that this is not your fault and I want you to really hear this and take this in because this is super important. If you walk around and you think that it's your fault, you will not be able to see the solution or even try it because you think that there is something wrong with you. And I often talk about how this is all by design. And I'm not going to repeat myself too much, but for those of you who are new to me and maybe new to the channel, Food addiction is a combination of a learned behavior associated with an unnatural uh, reward from an unnatural substance that we're eating, usually some sort of processed foods. So when you consume that, your brain will get a signal that is not natural. It's not meant to be able to handle a signal that is that strong. So what's going to happen is that you're going to have physiological correction in the brain where it down regulates the receptor so that you don't feel as much when you're eating the food you don't feel as much reward and as much pleasure so it down regulates that because it thinks that it just has too many receptors that's the way that your body reacts to it and as a result of this happening in combination and this being a massive reward when you're eating processed food you're going to develop a food addiction. So those in combination is what is actually causing that addiction to food. And none of this has anything to do with how strong you are, how worthy you are, or how smart you are. <laughs> Nothing. And believe me, I'm pretty fucking intelligent. And I was addicted to sugar for about 40 years or so. If I'm counting from birth. And it happened early in my childhood. So I know it has absolutely nothing to do with my intelligence. But I used to use this against myself for many years to just beat myself up about it, thinking that if I was just more intelligent, I wouldn't be doing this. Because clearly there's something I'm missing because I'm not smart enough. 
And I don't recommend that you do this, by the way. It's not really the best way of handling it. Now, hopefully you are with me and you get why it's not your fault. So if you're thinking that you should be able to stop it, stop doing that. Stop thinking that you should be able to do it. It's not a natural thing to stop it. And it's something that you need to learn. That's the whole idea. It's not going to help you to think that you should be able to do it differently. It's just going to hinder you when you want to make some progress. However, even though this is not your fault, as I said, it is your problem. Because you are clearly not happy with where you are. But if you are happy with where you are, if you're happy to just day in, day out, eat crap, which makes you feel like crap, and if you find this like a fulfilling way of living your life and just to sit and complain all day about how you can't lose weight or how your body hurts or that you have brain fog and how exhausted you are and, and all the BS, just go for it. No skin off my nose. But I don't know why you would watch this if that's where you are. But if you're happy with what you're doing, you don't need to change anything. Like, just accept where you are. Sometimes we're not necessarily happy where we, where we are, but we're not really motivated to do something about it either. If that's you, okay, do it. It's not my problem. It's your problem. So you, ha you get to decide. I'll cheer you on. I'll get the pom-poms out. And I won't, say that, I won't say that I understand you, but... I will support you in whatever you want to do because it's your life. You get to choose. You get to do whatever you want to make of it. It's yours. Okay? So, when I think about that, <laughs> and I don't know, some of you might just feel like really sick to your stomach when you think about just sitting there and complaining and feeling bad and feeling powerless to do anything about it. If that makes you feel a little bit sick, like, I really don't like that, and I know that there is more to life, and you know that you're missing out on whatever that is. You, you might not even know what it is, but you know that you're missing out on it. When you're just sitting there and indulging in your own victimhood, then you really need to do something right now. Like, do something. Take one little step. You have wasted enough time. Every day that goes by is just another day that you're going to regret. And I don't like having regrets. And I don't think you do either. But please consider, if you feel like, I really want to stop doing this, have a little think about what can I do today. It doesn't have to be massive. It can be massive, but it doesn't have to. And the way that you do this is that you need to learn how, how to strengthen your brain. And I'm not talking about developing more willpower or... I'm talking about retraining your brain in a way so that you don't act and react to the cravings that you have. And so that you are actually in control and that you can act the way that you want to act in that moment. At all times if you want to. And it isn't something that you can just do in one week or two weeks. Changing your brain takes a long time. It's like building a muscle in the gym. In the beginning, you might not see something. It might feel a little bit better, but you might not see something until one day. You just see that there is a difference, and it's the same thing. Having said that, some people, they actually do quit carbs in just a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, and they're doing it pretty well. But it's not just that. Like What they do is that they have learned very quickly how to react to the cravings when they have the cravings and they are just accepting, feeling those cravings straight away. And not everyone is going to do that. I, I definitely didn't do that, but I have had clients that do that, which is awesome. But that's not the end of the rewiring that you need to do. There is a lot more work to do. <clears throat> Your brain will have a billion excuses for why you should not continue doing what you know works like when you're sitting with a craving and you're allowing yourself to have a craving you know it, it works but your brain is going to tell you that we can't be bothered to do that because a billion different things so your job is to retrain your brain to not constantly just come up with these excuses because it will 
it will continue doing that for as long as you let it do that. And that is a whole different journey. And it's not one that I can teach you in a video because everyone has different excuses and everyone has different experiences that has shaped these thoughts and these thought patterns and these beliefs that you have. And that is almost always something that you need a professional to help you with. But I'm going to give you a few things that you can start doing today if you want to, so that you can get this process started on your own. But what I want you to know, though, is that all of this is possible. There's nothing here that is impossible for any human being. It's as simple as lifting weights in the gym. It doesn't come naturally to everyone, nor does lifting weights come naturally to everyone. It's not any easier than lifting weights. We're, we're lifting mental weights. And it might feel just as painful as actually going to the gym and lifting weights. But anyone who has a brain has the capacity to learn how to do it. Even if you have brain fog or mental fatigue or whatever is going on, even if you have a super busy brain, you can learn how to do this. The only thing you need is a desire to do it. So if you want to do it, you can do it. If you have that desire to do it, I can teach you how to do it. It's not hard to do. But the first thing you need to do is just become aware of your triggers and your thoughts. And then you need to be willing to feel what the cravings feel like in your body without an agenda. You want to just allow yourself to feel what that craving feels like in your body without reacting to that feeling. And the willingness to do this is the key. And for those of you who has, have been to my challenges or my trainings, you know how to do this already. If you haven't been to them, you can join the next one. Or you can go and look up some of my older YouTube videos. I have videos where I describe this. Now, the biggest problem you will face is that you will have all of these excuses, a billion of them, for why you don't want to feel those feelings or those cravings. And that's where it's different for every single person. We react in a similar way, but we have different excuses. So this is where you can start. When you have a craving and you don't feel like sitting with it, I want you to just write down all your reasons for why you don't want to sit with a craving and feel it. And then I want you to look at those reasons and decide whether they are good reasons for doing it or not. Most likely, they're all going to be bullshit reasons. That's what I call them. So if they are bullshit reasons, then we don't have to believe them anymore. Like what? But I do believe them. Yeah. So this is where you need to focus. Once you've written them down, you decide which ones are actually good reasons. Usually none of them are, but occasionally one, one might be then you need to focus on these, this area and you need to retrain your brain to not believe in those reasons. All of them. We want to prove them to be false. Sometimes it's easy to do with some of them and some of them are harder to do because we have believed them for such a long time that we, we really think that they, they are the truth, even though they're just thoughts. And then you need to redirect your brain to think about the reasons you have for why you want to go through this process. So we want to stop thinking about why we don't want to do it and we want to redirect to why we want to do it. Because your brain is always going to have both of them playing in the background, but the ones that will prevent you from doing it are going to be on a loud volume. You need to step in, take control and redirect at the same time as you're dispelling these old beliefs that you have about why you shouldn't be doing it. So in theory, it sounds very easy and it is actually really, really simple in practice. But so is lifting dumbbells at the gym. Yet the ma majority of the people who goes to the gym don't actually know how to do it correctly to get the results that they want. They might be lifting them, but if you know anything about lifting weights, when you're looking at them, you're going to cringe and you're going to think that they're going to lift the same weight months and months 
before they get any result, if they get any result, because they're just not actually contracting the muscle. They're just using momentum or whatever. And it's very easy to do with everything. And it's the same thing when you want to rewire your brain. And if you're anything like me and you want to have quit yesterday already, the quickest way to actually get out of this cycle is to join quitting for the last time. It's $1,500. There is a payment plan if you want it. We are working together for 12 weeks, both one-to-one -one and in a group setting. And by the end of the 12 weeks, I guarantee that you will no longer eat out of control and your desire for these foods are either going to be gone or significantly reduced. And there's a guarantee for that. It's a money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose. To sign up for that, you just go to www.pimjohnson.com forward slash group. I'm going to have the, the link in the description. You click the button that says sign up here. Then you go and sign up. You will get an email straight away with your login details. You can access the course and the video materials. And then you get the link to book in with me. And you could literally be started in 10 minutes. And you can be on your first call with me tomorrow. If you want this to have already happened, if you're sick of where you are right now and you don't want to wait any longer, go and sign up right now. Okay? Now, go and do something that really matters to you and enjoy the shit out of it. Because we need to replace this misery that we're in when we're addicted to food with something that we really enjoy. Life is too short to waste on suffering. But please don't do that. It's a waste of time. And I don't want you to do that. And that was all I had for you this week. I'll see you next week.